Hallelujah. We sing of his goodness. Amen. He's a good, good father. We just thank you, Lord, for who you are. You're the great I am, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And we're going to sing of your goodness. Mm -hmm. We thank you, Lord, that you're good even when we feel like maybe, maybe we're not good. But that doesn't mean you're not good. I thank you that you never give up on us, that you continue to chase us. I thank you, Lord, that you put obstacles in our way when we're getting off path so we don't get so far away. Mm -hmm. I thank you that you love us. In Jesus' name, all God's people said, Amen. Amen. I'm really excited because, um, here, babe. Oh, the last couple of days, you know, life goes like this, ups and downs, ups and downs. You never know what's going to happen, and you always get shocked, and you don't know what to do. And I can so see God working things out in my life so that I don't give in to anxiety. I used to fight with anxiety years and years ago. I have not had an issue with that in years. But these last few months, I've seen it creep back in and... You know, and what that is for me, talking about me, it's a lack of trust that God's got me. It's a lack of trust that His goodness is running after me. It's a lack of trust that maybe um, I can't control it, and I don't like it, and so um, it causes anxiety. Um, and so I've been having a lot of that lately. And I cry out to God, and I'm like, Lord, I really need you to take this from me. And what it is, it's a surrender. Not, God, I need you to take the anxiety. Lord, I need to give you and surrender the fight, the battle that I'm in, in my mind of the what ifs. What if it's true? What if it's not true? What if it doesn't work out? What if it doesn't turn out the way that you expect it to be? And then, so all of a sudden, when you're in these battles, and you can just feel your heart's beating, you're getting upset. I'm seeing God more and more revealing um, where I'm at. And I'm thankful for that because much of the time, we don't know where we're at. We think we know where we're at, but we don't really know where we're at until the waves come in. Until the, 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 the trials and tribulations come in. And then it's like, okay, what are we going to do? And so, for me personally... Even this week, I've, I've had some weird stuff come in, and I could feel, so I'm like deep breathing, you know, because I don't want to have nothing else happen to me. me. So I'm deep breathing, I'm like, God, you you got to take this from me, because I, this isn't healthy for me. And um, he says, you have to give it to me. No. Not what you're feeling, but what you're thinking. And when your thoughts and, and your fears and your control and your what ifs, you got to give those to me because that's what's going to make the difference in what you're feeling. I'm like, oh yeah, I know that. I have forgotten. And so I do that and all of a sudden I don't have to deep breathe because a peace that passes my own understanding rests on me. Next day something else comes along. Same scenario. First thing I do is get in the driver's seat, put it in gear, and take off. And I'm, on, I'm in the race. I'm in the fight. I'm going to do it. I'm going to take care of it and all these different things. And all of a sudden, I start feeling my body, like, saying, um, this isn't good for you. This is not good. Hello, sirens. Woo -woo. And then I realize, okay, yep, I'm doing it again, God. Now, listen, I didn't do this for years. I got delivered from anxiety a long time ago. But, you know, sometimes when things happen without you realizing it, it sneaks in just a little bit. You know, how do them mice get through something like this? They flatten out and they slither in. I mean, I'm telling you, they should be snakes. But, and that's what Satan does in our lives. And so I was thinking about the blessing today. And I was praying. I've been up in the night. I've been um, trying to sleep through the night. But I wake up a lot this these past few weeks, and I'm going to cry. Talk on it. And um, I've been lifting up my, my family because I can feel their pain. I feel my pain, but I feel their pain. 
And I'm like, Lord, the same power that raised Jesus from the dead lives in me. So I'm going to trust you and I'm going to pray and I'm going to believe because I want to go help and I want to control and I want to make him feel better and I want to help and I'm just me. But the power of prayer and the power of God and His presence is what everybody needs. So I've been praying peace and power and presence, peace and power and presence, and God, that, that they would know and that I would know and that we could just rest in you. And, and I have that vision of me in His hands, but I put other people in that vision now. And I'm like, okay, okay, we got them, Lord. You first and then the rest of us. And we're, we're interceding for each other and we're loving each other and... And there's a storm coming, and I know that. There's one more storm coming, and I know about this storm. And, um, but it's, it's just, I know this. But at the same time, I want to think about the blessing. I want to think about the Lord bless you and keep you and make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. You know, and, and so I want to meditate on that because the Word of God teaches us to think on things that are good, that are praiseworthy. And so when I get caught up over here in the storms and I forget where the peace and the presence of the Lord is, because <coughs> most all of us, we react out of our flesh before we move in the Spirit. And that's just, I don't, it's got to be normal because it happens to me all the time. It's happened in my entire Christian walk unless religion flares up. But usually my flesh wants to rule. But then the Spirit of God rises up and He takes that flesh down and He moves. Yes. So I want to meditate on the Lord bless me. The Lord bless you. That He keep you. That His face shines upon you. Remember when they used to close services with that? The pastors would say that, you know, every single week. You know, you would go to these churches and the Lord bless you and keep you. His face may shine upon you and be gracious to you. And that whole thing. Well, let's just really meditate on it. Like, let's receive the blessings of the Lord. Amen. I mean, we know the curse is out there. But the curses sometimes take takes prestige over the blessings of the Lord because we're so caught up in looking at the curses of man and the curses of sin and, and the stuff that's coming at us and the storms that we're facing. And on Sunday, after two years and three months, Tim and Melda were at church. After two years and three months and how many days? I mean, they had track, kept track of it. But... Paula was with them, and Paula has been here, but she had knee surgery, so she was away for a while. And she said, you know, in Psalms 23, she said, do you know that that table that is set before us in the midst of our battles, and God tells us to sit down, that it's his goodness that's on that table. I said, well, that's pretty awesome. I used to think of it like a feast, and I literally see food. <coughs> And, and I know that it was deeper than that, but I like certain foods, and that's what I see on this table, thinking I'm eating while I'm watching this happen. But it's the goodness of God that's on that table that is given to us so that we're not focused so much on the battle. We're focusing on the feast Amen. from the king. And so tonight I just really feel like this, this afternoon when I was heading towards the sanctuary, the Lord said, blessings, you know, I bless you, blessings. So I went and found this song. And, and I love to think that the Lord turns his face toward me, that he turns his face toward you. He doesn't turn it away from you. He had to do that with his son once because of sin and darkness. But what he does with you and I, is he turns his face toward us so that we know that he is the father and we are his children and that we are loved and he's not ashamed of us. Now, is he happy with everything that we have done? Absolutely not. And we as parents, I mean, our kids can do some pretty crappy things and we did some. And um, sometimes parents have to show tough love. 
But their faces are still towards you. Their love is still towards you. They want to bless you. They want to change you. Not change you. Let God change you. And when we allow God, we let go and let God, anxiety leaves. You know, the battles of the mind. I mean, they're terrible. You know, um, it hurts me when I know that some people that used to go here aren't here. But I don't get to make those choices. People have to make those choices. I have to choose to be here. I have to choose to be here and to serve the Lord. I have to choose here. And I don't mean hit and miss. I mean people that actually have moved on, you know, or whatever, moved out. That's what I'm talking about. Not, not the people that are here. And, but, um, but I'm like, Lord, at first I used to take it personal. But I know it's not me. Because when you study the Word of God and it talks about the trimming, and sometimes God even cuts a back away further, the good part of the vine, for more growth. And we don't understand that. And so the first thing that we want to do is either take blame or blame or wonder, when in fact we have to trust God that He knows what He's up to, as long as we do our part. So in discipleship class this week, we actually talked about what it is to be a Christian and from Romans 12 and showing love and, and just being there. And, and I, I know that for Dan and I, we reach out to people from this body that, that you probably don't think that we do, but we do because this is what God asks us to do. And then there's other times where he says, leave it alone. So we have to trust him. But his face is still toward them toward you and and this is why I'm like we can't be talking about other churches we can't be talking about each other in bad ways because there's enough of that in the world to go around for eternity what we want to do is bring the presence and be the atmosphere changers so that we can be used of God to bring people into the kingdom of heaven and that we ourselves the blinders are removed from our eyes because we think we're all that sometimes and we're really not. And when God starts to challenge you and start revealing the things of your heart, it hurts. But as you see, these things that God is trying to reveal through the blessing, believe it or not, it's a blessing. Because what it does is it produces more love in us when we see our imperfections, when we see our sin. Right? And so yesterday, um, I'll just give you an example. Um, I, got, I got a letter from the bank and... The letter, I didn't understand the letter, and I was trying to break it down and try to figure it out. And I'm thinking, man, did I do something wrong? So the first thing I did, the very first thing I did, is I started making phone calls. But then after that, I wrote a check. I'm like, you know, I'm going to take this. I'm going to have my husband take this to the bank and bypass this in case I did do something wrong because I want my money. That's the very first thing that I did. And I asked my husband, I said, Dan, you go to go. You got to go to the bank in the morning. And I'm writing this check out in your name, and I want you to cash it and put it in our account. And if if I'm reading this letter right and it's flagged, then I'm going to know it, right? But after 15, 20, half hour, maybe even an hour, maybe two, I finally started listening to the Spirit of God, and I said, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. It does not matter. It actually had to do with probate and my mom's account. I didn't know if I was a, a proof signer, which ends at death. If you, don't have a, if you don't have a beneficiary on your account, you better get one. But, or was I a joint heir? We did this in 2009. I didn't know. And the way I read the letter, I'm thinking, oh, geez, I'm just this person, and I have no authority, and I have this amount of money out of my mom's in my credit card, and I'm going to get my money before I call them and ask them what this letter's all about. That was flesh. So I had a plan. I told Dan. Dan said, okay. He didn't know what my plan was. He was just saying, okay, I'll go to the bank. That's, that's a good check. Well, what if it wasn't? But anyways, what God did is he said, what does it matter? Through my sister, actually, because I called her. She was one of my phone calls. And she says, it doesn't matter. She says, it's, it's one way or the other, whether we got to go to probate or not, you know. What does it matter? I'm like, whoa, a lot of money that's going to, I'm going to be out for several months, you know. Um, but the Lord spoke to my heart. And he said, you were going to be sneaky. You were going to try 
to pull a fast one. He says, don't you see what's in operation right now? No wonder you're breathing hard. No wonder your, your, your heart is beating. No wonder you're like freaking out and calling everybody and you're not talking to me because you're trying to find out the answer so you can control it before it happens. That's exactly what I did. And the Lord says, trust me. Does it matter? It really doesn't matter. Time is all it's going to be. So I took the check and I stuck it back in the checkbook and I'm like, Lord, it really doesn't matter. I was going to do something pretty sly right here, at least a thought. You know, I, and it just, it's the way I think. And I thought, well, if, they, if the account's flagged, then they're going <laughs> to tell Dan <laughs> that they can't cash the check. And I'm on it, right? I'm sending him. I ain't going. Wow. Hey, I am want. so fleshly. I'll take one for the team, David. Yes, I am so fleshly. I am. But I am redeemed by the blood of the Lamb and the Lord. would He let me kick and scream and be in my poo for those couple of hours, it seemed like. I'm sure because I ended up calling Tammy in the uh, almost 11 o'clock and I said, by the way, Tammy, I just want to let you know I have peace because I'm back in the will of the Lord. She said, praise the Lord because I'm calling her because she works for the bank. And she says, well, if your name's not on the... On the um, the return thing, then you're probably just an, a designated dri uh, designated <laughs> authorized driver <laughs> signer, and um, so you don't really have any legal right. And I'm like, oh man, I just used, I just used my mom's card the other day, and uh, I'm in trouble. So I was just fretting. And but the thing is, is as soon as as soon as I listened to that little small voice, and I started doing the right thing I'm like yeah and it came from my sister my wis the wisdom came from my sister and um, she's like it really it doesn't matter you know it's I'm like yeah but I looked it up it's like seven months you know and this and that and uh, long story short I put it away I repented because I was definitely going to pull a fast one and, and sin and I absolutely knew what I was doing. And um, not that I didn't know it. Like, I wasn't aware until the Lord started showing me. Because I just was going to do what I know to do in the flesh. And that's control it, manipulate it, all the things that are not of God. But as soon as I listened to Him, and I started putting it in order, I had the peace that passed my own understanding. Mm -hmm. I'm excited. So I told my husband, I said, honey, I'm not going to have you take, you that, take that check to the bank. I'm going to call the bank first just in case. He goes, okay, that's fine. He still didn't know. He's just finding out the story the first time with y'all about how wicked I am. <laughs> and so, anyways, I called the bank, and yes, I was a joint it was a joint owner, so I didn't do anything wrong. It was a, it's one of the letters that they send out, and I'm still cleaning up and taking care of and stuff, but I thought I did something wrong, and I thought, oh, they're sending me this letter. I'm in trouble. I, I didn't know I was only an authorized signer. I thought it was joint, and I'm, you know, taking care of business. Well, no. No, no, that's not the way it works. I found out from Tammy, which made me have anxiety. <laughs> No, it was my own flesh. But so, so, but can I tell you that as soon as I turned to the Lord and His face turned toward me, I was blessed. Amen. And I felt good. It didn't matter when I made the call. I was hoping that I, that I was wrong from what I was thinking. I was really hoping and praying, and I was. Thank you, Jesus. Um, because I might have had to do some cleanup work. You know, um, but his face shined upon me. So can I tell you, if you're walking around without hope and you think that you're, you're being tormented about something that you did or you were going to do or you're walking around in guilt and condemnation, it's time to lay it down and just turn your face to the Lord. Repent. I repented. I was like, still going to bed. My heart's beating a little bit. I'm still fighting anxiety because I'm wanting to make sure that I repented good. 
And I, and I would wake up in the night a little bit last night and I repented again. And I don't have to beg my father. It's just, I just wanted to make sure I didn't have to, I didn't have to go through any bad filters, you know. I want, I want the word to be pure. I want my heart to be pure. I want his love to be pure and as pure as it can be in this earthen vessel here on earth. And so I want him to reveal the things that I re don't even realize I'm doing that are just part of the flesh and part of the world. And everybody would have done the same thing. You know? But when God speaks and we hear and we listen... And he said, my goodness goes before you, it's around you, it's behind you, and it is in you. And I will work it through you if you will listen to me. And it felt so good to put, because the whole time the check's sitting there, I picked it up like six times and looked at it. I'm thinking, man, that's a lot of money. But I got to get that money because, man, I don't want to wait. And, and then I put it down. And then I would feel guilty and I'd pick it back up. And I would look at it and convince myself it was okay to do it. And then I'd put it back down. And I'm, it just was in this battle. And I'm using money in a real life thing that happened to me last night. But I've had many things happen to me over the past few weeks. But this is just one of them. And I love that His goodness is running after me. And His goodness is running after you. So when He said, when I say or you say, Lord bless you. Let's bless each other. Lord, I pray that you turn your face upon them, that, that, that you keep David. God, that, that, that you do what only you can do through David because I can't control David. I can't, I can't make him come to church. Every once in a while I knock and make sure that he's still going to come. I'm like, David, I'm just so glad that you could, you know. He goes, Pastor, I'm always going to be here. I, I'm committed. I said, okay, I'm holding you to it. <laughs> you know, but because, you know, you, 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 um, you hurt when you, when, when you lose people. You hurt because they're part of your body. And so when, when you cut off a finger, man, it's just gone, you know, and, and it hurts. And, and I'm talking people. And so I want to be the best shepherd that I can be called by God and love his people and and I missed more church than anybody in the last six months but I, I hated it because I felt so separated from everybody but at the same time God was still blessing me he was still turning his face toward me he was keeping me and he was being gracious to me and even yesterday when I was in the midst of my scheme he still was turning his face toward me and saying look at me look at me you're looking at you and your fear and your control and everything that you want and you're afraid and then you know what are you gonna do about the money and all of that and and he said look at me look at me it's like you know when Peter was walking on the water and and as long as Peter kept his eyes on Jesus he stayed on top of the water and he just kept walking but the minute that he took his eyes off from Jesus and everything he started realizing what was happening he began to sink that's us so when you hear the Lord this week saying, look at me, look at me, look at me. We need to look at him because he is calling us. He is setting us apart. He is, he is getting us ready for what is coming. And that we've got to be cleaned out right. and cleaned up. And I just didn't do this last night because I've struggled with some things over the past few months. I did that because that's flesh. And when flesh lives, it stinks, it's ugly, and it does things it shouldn't do. But yet God's goodness was still running after me. And I, the guilt and condemnation, that I wasn't fighting guilt and condemnation. I was fighting, I'm going to manipulate and move. That's what I was doing. But what I was doing is I could feel the presence of the Lord through conviction running after me, telling me, don't do this. Once I, it all started coming down and then I started listening to his voice coming through my sister. And I'm like, hello, what am I doing? Man, I put that thing away really fast and repented and said, man, this is not good. So when I called Tammy, she was so relieved. Because I said, I got peace now, and this is what I'm doing. She goes, Pastor, that's, ex that's right. That's what you do. That's awesome. You know, and she didn't even know what I was really doing. I was just getting information from her because she works in bank. 
And, um, but I was so tormented. And that torment will cause you to do things that are not of God. I was scared. So see, my fear drove me to do many other things. So it's not just one thing that we're dealing with when God reveals sin in our lives. It's several things. They're attached. These are actions. But the real thing was fear for me. And it started driving all these other things in me, in my flesh. Because I put my faith behind fear, and fear ruled me. When the Lord spoke and I turned my face toward the Lord because He was turning His face toward me, then all of a sudden faith rose up. And it didn't matter. I trust my Lord. What does it matter? It, one way or another, it's going to work out. and It's going to be exactly right. And he knows what He's doing. Amen. So when He said the blessing today, I'm like, God, that's it. We need to meditate on the blessings. The blessings of the Lord. So we sang it. And it said, Lord bless you and keep you. His face shine upon you, me. Be gracious to you, me. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Man, this is an awesome prayer to be praying for people. Especially those that you know are suffering. And they have anxiety. And they only have a very short period of time to live. And they know that they have cancer. Or they're afraid because they have an upcoming surgery. No, God says, Lord bless you. He's going to keep you. He's going to make his face shine upon you. You don't have to worry. Because he'll be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. You don't have to worry about your upcoming surgery. He's got you. Amen? Amen. 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 May his favor be upon you a thousand generations. I was thinking about that in the back. A thousand generations. That's pretty cool. I mean, you got a generation right there on your lap. Think about the ones that are going to come after. When you read about Moses and you read about all these people in the Old Testament and all these kids they had and all this stuff, it's, it's hard to imagine that we are part of that. A thousand generations. So may his favor be upon you a thousand generation and your family and your children and their children and their children. May his presence go before you and behind you and beside you and around you and within you, Amanda. I hear him saying he hasn't forgot you. Like I feel like the Lord is saying you've been a bit lonely and feeling a bit forgotten. But God says to tell you He has not forgotten you. He has not forgotten you. He says it's not about works. It's about your heart. And your heart is pure and you're trying to do for everybody. And you're trying to be it for everybody. And so sometimes you feel like you've really let God down because everybody doesn't turn out the way that you thought maybe they would in the situation. But the Lord said, it's okay. You did your part, what you were supposed to do. They got to do their part and I'll most definitely do my part. But you need to know he hasn't forgot about you and that he loves you. And he sees your heart and he sees your love for people. And he says he is going to increase it makes our hearts like ooh but through it he'll work his plans through you to a greater degree because your love will increase so there's heartache that comes with taking on more love just like Jesus did but look at the miracles that came out of his love look at the redemption that came from his blood and he said he's put that in you he's put that in you because you said yes. Amen. 
in the morning, in the evening, in your coming and in your going, and in your weeping, in your rejoicing. He is for you. He is for me. <laughs> so may His presence go before you and behind you and beside you, all around you, within you. He is with you. He is with you. So what I'm hearing real quick before I pray is Stan, as I was reading that last part, he, he goes before you, he's around you, he's within you. All of a sudden I heard to tell you that not to listen to your body. Don't listen to your body. I mean, our bodies let us know when we need rest and stuff. That's not what I'm talking about. Our bodies are also flesh too. And so sometimes our bodies dictate and they lie to us. Like it's always going to be this way. We're never going to feel any better. This is just the way it is. It's going to be one thing after another. And the Lord says it doesn't have to be that way. And that you have to fight the battle. Because it's a battle of the wills. The will of the Lord, of what he wants to produce in you, and the will of the flesh that wants to control you. And so God says that he has put his spirit in you to win. And he's put his spirit in you to produce. And he said, so just produce. Not you produce. He'll produce through you. But your battle is winning in the mind. And not allowing the flesh to overtake the things of the spirit. Because of the way that we feel every day when we wake up. As we get older. And things change. And the Lord says that that does not stop the purpose and the will of the Father if we don't give in to it. And so that's what I'm hearing for you to go. To run, to go, to run. There are things for you to do. And if you don't run after those things, those things will go unfinished. Mm -hmm. And he purposed you to bring in those things to the finish line. Amen. And you're important. Amen. That's what I'm hearing. Let's pray. So God, I just thank you that your face is turned toward us. I thank you for the lesson that I learned last night and that you just decided to share it with the world. <laughs> I thank you, God, that you draw near to the humble and the brokenhearted, and that's what we are when we see the things that we're doing. And I thank you that you always, always prepare us, repair us, excuse me. You repair us. You repair our brokenness. You bind up our broken hearts. You take care of us. And I thank you for that, Father. So, Lord, I just lose a blessing in the name of Jesus just to be on each of us, that we would meditate on that song. We would meditate on those scriptures because you do turn your face toward us. And I pray that we will turn our face toward you and see you and let you be who you are. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.